Hello. Good, good evening. Hi. Uh, so what can you tell me about your project here? Uh, so I did a project about getting cells in acrylic paint pouring. It's a type of painting technique. So I learned in my project about a special phenomenon called Raleigh-Taylor effect. And I learned that it can affect how dense the paints are and how the patterns they make in the painting. So my goal was to find out how if I added silicone oil to my paint, whether I would get more or fewer cells in my painting, and those were patterns in the painting that I made. So my hypothesis was that if I added more silicone oil, then I would get more cells, and if I added less, I would get fewer, because I thought that the lower density oil would rise to the top and make more bubbles. So I did some research and I found out, as I mentioned, about the Rayleigh-Taylor effect. And I also learned that acrylic paint is water-based. So water is the main ingredient in it. And the main difference between the different types of paints is the pigment that's in it. So I learned that paint itself can make some paints denser and some paints um, more or less dense and float towards the top. Um, so if I have a denser liquid on top, then it tends to sink, and then that will cause the bubble effect. So I collected a bunch of materials for my project, and the most important details were to include a pouring medium in the paint and mix it together so that they were all the same consistency. So I tried to use a controlled consistency for all of my paints, and I tried to use the same amount and put my paints in the same order. Um, and then I wrote down my procedures here as well, so, um, and a copy of my report is right here as well. Um, but I use the same procedure for every single paint cup when I put them on my painting, except that I use more silicone oil with my later trials, and I increased it every time. So, in my results, I found out about the size and the depth of the cells. So as I expected, there, was, there were more cells uh, that were large when I added the silicone oil. So you can see in my circle graph here, I have a small number of cells that were large when I didn't add the silicone. But when I added silicone oil, I had a lot more cells that were large. And I also was able to plot as I increased the amount of silicone oil, the uh, number of cells that were larger than one centimeter. And there was kind of a correlation or a pattern as I went up in number of cells and in amount of oil. I also had deeper cells, so that was something that I had predicted as well. So my independent variable was the amount of silicone oil I added, and I measured the size and the depth. So in conclusion, I found out that my results supported my hypotheses, and I think that this study could be improved if I had a better way of counting the cells because I ended up um, sometimes maybe double counting a cell as I was waiting for something to dry. So one idea that I had was to count after everything was dried and to put a piece of plastic wrap down and actually use a marker to mark the locations. Um, so that's something I would do if I was going to repeat this experiment. Um, and some other things that I was interested in studying more if I had a chance to expand on this experiment I would be interested in focusing less on the silicone oil and just on the actual paints and how they sink or float uh, because I thought that that would have been really neat to study as an artist um, as well. And I think that it could also be applicable not just to artists, but other scientists study how den denser and less dense liquids float or sink, like geologists want to know about what materials will sink and float in the earth. So that's an applica application that my study could have to other people as well. So in conclusion, I just wanted to thank all the people that helped me with this project, like my husband and uh, my friends. So thanks. Do you have any questions about my project? Yeah, well, first of all, very nice. Good work. Um, what made you interested in this topic? Oh, that's a great question. So um, one of my friends is an artist. And I had seen a painting that had some cells in it that really made me wonder how those were formed and how an artist could maybe increase the chance of getting that effect or maybe avoid them if they didn't want them. Okay, okay. Now, um, 
how did you reach your conclusions again? Can you can you tell me one more time? So what I did was I counted in my paintings um, how many cells I got, and I compared the number of cells that I had in the paintings that didn't have silicone oil, and then those that had an increasing amount. So then I was able to see how many cells and also how how deep they were. I counted deep cells as ones that had um, like different colors, more than just one color within the little bullseye pattern. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for presenting this to us. Thank you.